My law firm just won a $13,000 arbitration award against a company called Goodleap in a solar panel case. Now, if you don't know anything about the solar debacle going on right now, count yourself lucky because there's a lot of people who are having their lives financially ruined from this. And if you don't know who Goodleap is, count yourself real lucky because they're people that, in my personal opinion, you really don't want to do business with. I want to walk you through why, what's going on with these arbitrations that are going on against Goodleap and various other companies, and why their litigation strategy tells you that Really, you should be very careful about signing a contract with a company that acts the way these guys do towards their customers. What's the general solar problem that's going on with all these people that are selling solar all around the country? It's been a complete disaster. And people who have bought solar, sometimes they get lucky and don't have anything happen. But a lot of people have basically been defrauded. They have salespeople going around door to door. They're targeting the elderly. We've seen all kinds of crazy things where people are being sold contracts for panels that aren't generating power. They're, they've gotten like fake power generation statements saying that their panels were working at a certain amount when they weren't. Um, there's people who have had, uh, especially if they're elderly, have had contracts signed and even forged by sales salespeople who use Adobe PDF to fake signatures on them. And most, not most, but many of the companies that were involved in this, especially the bigger ones, uh, were especially involved in the fraudulent practices. Why is it big companies that are such a problem? Well, a lot of the reason, so there's been a lot of smaller ones that are fly-by-night operations. Fly-by-night, uh, if you haven't heard that phrase, it means basically they, they disappear at night. So some company, that, not literally, but kind of. So companies will go install panels. And this is something that's been going on, not just in the solar industry, but um, a lot of different industries. And home construction is a big one uh, that this has happened for you know 50 years, 60 years. Somebody will come door-to-door, -door, do door-to-door -door sales. They'll promise to... Uh, put solar panels on your house and then the company files for bankruptcy or disappears um, and now what are you going to do if they messed up the installation did shoddy work uh, we're seeing people with their roofs caving in actually our client in this arbitration had roof damage um, and uh, what what is the remedy that someone has if they have somebody just come by and lie to them and commit fraud and put panels on their house that don't work uh, don't do what was promised or even destroy their house this is happening with huge companies. The one that uh, was involved in this arbitration that was the installer was a company called Pink Energy. Pink Energy did, you know, thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of ins installations all around the country and then just went bankrupt. And many of many of those people are saying that uh, the installations were done incorrectly, that they didn't weren't up to code, that they're actually dangerous. Um, and Pink Energy has gone. So they're in bankruptcy. They're saying, oh, we don't have any money. What are you going to do about it? And uh, part of the problem is that this is not just a, an issue that is caused by these kind of fly-by-night companies, even the bigger ones. And, and there have been, I think, maybe 10, 11, or 12 uh, of these giant companies that have recently declared bankruptcy. What was happening is that they were getting money dumped on them uh, from companies like Goodleap. Goodleap is a financing company. You're less likely to have heard about them than any of these solar companies because usually the way you end up dealing with Goodleap is that they have a contract sort of attached to your solar a contract. You might be signing multiple contracts. You may not even know it, depending on what the salespeople does and how they or salespeople do and how they treat you. Um, but Goodleap or many of these contracts is providing the financing. They borrow the money or get the money from wherever they get it from, package a bunch of solar loans together, and then they can uh, companies like Goodleap can go flip them to other people. They can keep them. They can do whatever. Um, but they're kind of the the source of the spigot of money uh, that is going to actually pay for the solar panels, which that you then borrow. Uh, through contracts with Goodleap and with the company that is installing the solar panels. Why is that even a problem? You're going, you might be going like, well, well, okay, so what's the issue? The problem is that uh, there, and this is not me saying this, there are many attorney generals that have uh, started sending letters to Goodleap, and one of one attorney general in Minnesota has even sued Goodleap. So I want to show you what they say, because uh, you don't have to just sort of trust what, I, what I'm saying. I'm a lawyer suing these people, but um, what is the attorney general of Minnesota saying? And you never want to get sued by an attorney general. That's not good. Uh, they're accusing Goodleap and several other companies that are doing the same in, in the same kind of side of the industry of engaging in fraudulent practices. What the state of Minnesota is saying is that Goodleap adds fraudulent fees onto the financing contract. So yes, they're providing money, but uh, the Attorney General of Minnesota is saying that a large portion of the fee that you actually end up signing for to pay for your solar panels is is a, an illegal charge that is being added that can be that can cause you to pay up to thirty six percent more than what the actual price should have been. Now, what the Minnesota Attorney General is alleging is that Goodleap was involved in actually coaching these fly-by-night companies on how to sell the solar panels to people. So they would tell them, hey, 
go emphasize that there's going to be a low annual percentage rate, the APR. So it sounds good. Uh, like in, right here in the complaint, it says that they, they were uh, coaching the people to say that they would have interest rates as low as 1.49%, which is really low. It's a low interest rate if it were true. But the Minnesota Attorney General is saying that's not actually true, that they have these secret fees that are tacked in, like they're in the agreement that are kind of buried in the agreement so you wouldn't actually see them. And it's such a big per percentage of what you're paying that your APR is actually so high that it's illegal under Minnesota law. You can see this part of the complaint, the Minnesota Attorney General is saying that Goodleap has sort of come up, concocted this scheme with the contracts to call fees that really should be part of the interest rate overhead costs. And overhead is just sort of like a cost of doing business uh, of, of running your company and pretend that it was something that was charged to the installing company instead of just a, fi a financing fee for Goodleap itself. Now, these are all allegations. This is what the Minnesota Attorney General is saying. Whether any of this is true or not is ultimately something for the judge or a jury up in Minnesota to decide. But from my personal perspective, I've had a lot of experience dealing with Goodleap, our law firm has, and it's not, uh, <laughs> not encouraging for whether um, you're going to get a fair, fair deal from them. So I want to walk you through our arbitration. And if you're one of these pink, pink energy victims, you may be very interested in this. If you're a victim of like Titan Solar is a company that just filed for bankruptcy, it's going to put a lot of people in the same situation. Or if you are thinking about solar and you see Goodleap as a name on the contract, which you should check for, this is what could happen to you. This is the arbitration award with our client. Uh, our client, when I said that the client won $13,000, to be clear, that's what she received uh, out of this, attorney's fees, Goodleap was ordered to pay them separately. So they had to pay on top of that $13,000, pay for the costs of the arbitration, the costs of uh, the expert witness that we had for the client to go look at her house, uh, and then had to pay the attorney's fees. So that's a big loss for Goodleap. And in addition to that, the client got her loan canceled. So in addition to getting paid the $13,000, which unfortunately is probably going to go to the roof, as you'll see below, uh, Goodleap ended up having to just have a complete loss on this. What is arbitration? You may not know what that is. Well, in the contracts with Goodleap and with a lot of these solar companies, they'll say you don't get to go to court. You have to go to this private uh, arbitration company. You have sort of a mini lawsuit and a mini trial that happens over Zoom. And uh, you get, uh, in this case, in a lot of cases, they are former judges who are appointed. So our, the, the, the judge who decided this was actually a former chief justice of the Georgia Supreme Court. So this is a guy who's had a lot of experience, very smart. And uh, that tells you that this arbitration award is something that uh, you know, if you're in this situation, I, I can't guess your odds, but uh, we are very happy with this and very happy that someone with that background looked at the facts and looked at the law and said that Goodleap was responsible for what happened here to our client. So what happened to her in, in this process? And these are facts that have been found by an arbitrator after reviewing evidence. So we're at the point where this is established as what happened by the arbitrator's decision. So you can see the arbitrator said that what happened to our client is that uh, a salesperson from this pink energy company, which is the solar installer, came by. Uh, it was an unsolicited visit, just, you know, knocks on the door, spent several hours making a bunch of uh, looks around four hours is what the arbitrator found and just made a bunch of promises that weren't true. And that's fraud. When you do something, when you lie to a customer about what's going to happen and you know it's not the truth, uh, it's fraud. And the arbitrator found that the salesperson just took out this iPad, sort of scroll, scroll, scrolls through the signing portion so th that uh, our client didn't get, didn't get a chance to actually read it. And then uh, says that the financing company, which is Goodleap, is one of uh, the partners of Pink Energy, this installer. And so during the installation, you can see the arbitrator found that Pink Energy uh, damaged the roof substantially. It caused leaking, it caused dam damage to the home. Um, and then Pink Energy just sort of goes bankrupt and is gone. So what does Goodleap do? So what position are they in at this point? Goodleap is collecting money on this thing. This is a system that she was told was going to generate a certain amount of power. Uh, it was going to like do all this great stuff for her. And then not only did it not do that, it just broke her roof and damaged her entire house to the, to the point that there was water leaking everywhere. And Good Goodleaf just tells her, go pound sand is the, the, the colloquial phrase for that. Basically, we don't care. You're going to keep paying this bill. It doesn't really matter that your house has been destroyed uh, or damaged. It, I don't care. You can just keep paying me the money. It's not my problem. I'm not the one who installed this roof. I'm Goodleap. I'm the company that just takes your money. Then the client stops making those payments. And what does Goodleap do? Well, they don't do anything. This, this says for after two months, they send her an email saying, oh, we're going to send someone out there. Then after uh, uh, five months later, uh, they send this repair person out there who in a few minutes is able to replace a component, which then uh, fixes the system. But uh, the the client had still had repairs to do to her house because the installation that Goodleap was part of funding and, and part of this process, and we'll get more to that later, um, they had messed up the installation. 
There was a poor design to it. There's inspections of this. You can see that our expert witness went in there and, th and said that it was unprofessional, that there was water damage all around the, so like right where they installed it. So it's kind of clear, like, what's the cause? Well, there's water damage all around where you put the solar panels in. Like, it didn't follow the local building codes and uh, it just was terrible, terrible work with, with Good Leap's partner. And he determined that there, there was damage ca caused by this and that the solar panels themselves were risking serious injury to people and numerous electrical, electrical problems that caused a fire risk if you just left them there. So our client was just left having to deal with that herself because Pink Energy was, or uh, the company that installed it was just, they're gone. And then Good Leap is sort of dithering and not doing all too, all too much on it. And then they, when, they, when the expert checks like how much power is it actually generating, it was like much, much lower than was represented. It was not what was promised to the client. And like, she was just basically just left, whole, like she was just supposed to deal with this and decided, no, I'm going to go arbitrate and fight back against Goodleap. The arbitrator looked at the, the contract between Goodleap and this pink energy company. It held that Goodleap was all up in this. This is, this is what the Minnesota Attorney General is saying as well. But the arbitrator decided that Goodleap was uh, in control enough of the pink energy company when they were doing the installation that they were effectively the agents of Goodleap and Goodleap was responsible for what they did. And that really makes sense. If you are, if, if it's true what the Minnesota Attorney General is saying, that they're coaching people on what to say in their sales presentations, well, you're up in it. You are, you are part of this. You're a business partner with these people. You can't just throw up your hands and say, well, they're gone and it's not my problem. Our client was Goodleap's customer. Someone signing a financing contract with Goodleap, you're their customer. And the way businesses are supposed to be dealing with customers is to treat them with, with some kind of at least like, hey, like if you're going to keep charging money on these solar panels, just a gut thing that I think a lot of people would think is, and I think almost everyone would think is like, look, you want to keep billing me for this. It needs to work. Uh, you're partners with these people. Uh, they destroyed my roof. Like, like someone's responsible for this. You can't just point the finger off at this company that you were working with and say, you have to keep paying me even though you never got what you were promised and actually got defrauded and had your house destroyed. Is that fair? Well, no, the arbitrator didn't think it was fair. I don't think anyone would think it was fair, except for perhaps Goodleap, who decided to keep fighting the client on this to the very end, which is an absolutely irrational decision. Why would a big company uh, such as Goodleap act in a completely irrational manner? You might wonder that, and definitely if you're one of the many, many people, I've heard that there are thousands of them uh, who are currently in arbitration against Goodleap, like, why are they fighting this stuff to the end? It would seem to make no sense, but I'm going to tell you why. First big reason is defense lawyers bill by the hour. So if you have a defense attorney and, you know, there is a heavy incentive, and I've heard real bad stories of what defense attorneys, how much they hype up their ability to win sometimes to their clients. Um, we will be looking at these cases going, what are you thinking? Like, why would you, like, you look at the, I mean, just look at this person where you're going, like, her roof caved in right by the solar panels, and you're going to say, like, oh, I have no responsibility here. I want to keep taking money from her. It doesn't look like it's a very sympathetic plaintiff. And uh, one, of th one thing I learned in law school a long time ago, I had a, a professor who his entire theory of the law is he'd gone out and he had reviewed like a thousand legal decisions by judges, these long things, and was reading them, trying to figure out, trying to make sense of this um, area of law where everything was completely contradictory. He comes back from it and writes this giant book where the theory is the law doesn't matter. <laughs> the whole theory of his book was that, you, you know, if you watch TV shows and people went on technicalities, uh, everyone who watches a legal TV show thinks that people win all the time on technicalities. That's not been my experience. And what my professor told, told us uh, that has been very helpful to know going through law school is that judges, arbitrators, whoever work backwards, anyone, a jury too, anyone deciding this in your head, whether you know it or not, you're really looking first, like what's fair, what is just, what is the just thing to do? And the judges will work backwards from that. So even though they don't say they're doing it and may not even know they're doing it, what they're really doing is, you know, when you try to win on a technicality, there are exceptions to the rule, to the exception to the rule, to the exception to the rule. To exce there's a million different paths the judge could take, and there's often a lot of leeway built in there specifically so the judge can do what is morally right and what is just, uh, regard and they can find like sort of a way to make the outcome what it should be. And th like my professor said, that's always what's going to happen. Like almost always, you're, if you just look at the case, if the, the person who is suing seems like they're right, and they like they have a good case. They're a person who was wronged and was treated badly. They're probably going to win. The defense attorneys will not tell their clients that. They will throw attorneys at the case because they're billing a thousand bucks an hour, five hundred bucks an hour, whatever it is, insane amounts per hour. And then they'll put five attorneys on a call, and you're sitting here sometimes calculating the call, going, "These guys are how are they convincing their client to do this?" Well, they're telling the client, "Oh, you've got the greatest thing in the world. We're just going to beat them all, 
beat those plaintiff's attorneys down and you know how can they possibly think that a woman who had a roof caved in is ever going to be sympathetic no we'll beat that whatever they're telling them i have no idea how they convince these people but they do and i've heard stories some of them joke about how easy it is to get their clients to uh pony up you know millions of dollars to fight cases that they never should have fought in the first place that's big reason number one big reason number two is that good leap is owned and run by private equity this is a private equity firm type place uh, it's owned by Goldman Sachs, or at least like heavily Goldman Sachs is involved in them. If you don't know who that is, they're like a big bank, uh, investment bank uh, in New York. And private equity, if you don't know what that is, it's these com these kind of groups of in investment professionals is maybe the way to put it. People who are like, oh, I'm really smart and I'm going to borrow all this money and buy uh, companies with huge amounts of debt, but I won't own, owe the debt. The company will owe debt that pays to sell itself to me. So like the price of the purchase then is just like shoved onto the company. And then mostly they just bankrupt the companies because they don't know what they're doing. Uh, that's, that's pretty much been true if you look at like Red Lobster or like the, any, uh, all these stores that you see going bankrupt, these big chains you've seen forever. Um, mostly what's actually happening behind the scenes is that these private equity companies buy them. The people who then get put in charge know zero about their industry, zero about pretty much anything about running a seafood restaurant or, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond or whatever. They have no idea. All they know about is doing sort of like financial maneuvers. So they'll sell the land that's under the Red Lobster or the Pizza Hut or whatever it is, um, sell it off and then rent it from themselves and make this big long contract thing that makes sure that the private equity company makes tons of money even if the actual company goes bankrupt. And that's a huge part of what's wrong with our country in general is you have these people who have no idea what they're doing in terms of running a business thinking that they can run a business. Well, what happens if you put someone who has no idea what they're doing <laughs> in terms of anything other than financial machination and don't know how to run a business, but think they do, and then you put that person in charge of running a bunch of lawsuits. Well, it doesn't go well. And that should be kind of obvious. Like it is like, sometimes you do wonder, you're like, these people are definitely smart, but it's just like, it's the wrong kind of smart. And if they had, if they step back and had common sense, the reason we use jurors instead of judges to decide things is you get 12 people, you get common sense. A lot of times people don't have common sense. They don't, they've never talked to the poors or whoever, like the, you know, they, they have that attitude, right? They'll be up in New York, they'll be in some multi-million dollar apartment, and they just look at you like you're a poor person and why should I think about what regular people think? And the problem is that regular people don't like that attitude. And that is their attitude a lot of times. These people, I don't know exactly what's in their heads, but I've sued, we, we've had a number of, of big uh, lawsuits or mass arbitrations against private equity owned companies. And they're the most irrational by far. They're believing what their defense attorneys are telling them even when it makes no sense. When, I'm, when we're looking at cases going like, you know, you're gonna win some of them, but you're, you're going to get hosed overall. We have a whole, uh, period of this that we call teaching the defendant or training the defendant. They have to get trained because they don't know what the heck's going on and their client doesn't thinks that they're going to just win everything and uh, you have to teach them over time what's actually going to happen because it should be common sense that if you look at a plaintiff like this that that you can't cave in her roof and be all up in this training the salespeople and helping the salespeople and have all these rights in the contract to take charge of this and then expect to win arbitration. Uh, but people they don't think that way they sort of like something in their head is just like there'll be a technicality or the defense attorney is telling them that they're, they may or may not be an attorney they may just be some executive and they're an executive who thinks they can run a seafood restaurant and a car dealership and whatever um, which is hubris is the greek name for that and it always comes before a fall um, and so they will make bad decisions what does that mean for their victims slash customers if you're if you're their customer it means that they're going to sit there and fight you on something completely irrational is the nice way to put it. I would say kind of a stupid is, is a another way to put it. Uh, but irrational is, is the nice way to say they will fight you on something when they shouldn't for years. And so if you're in the situation that our client's in, you sign that good leap contract because you could they're doing contracts on lots of stuff. Their website says HVAC contracts and you may find them at the back of any kind of big financing purchase. You should just be real careful, real careful who you're signing with. But we know from litigating against them that even in a case like this, I look at this case and go, this was slam dunk for our client and they still fought it to the very end. What does that do to our client? She's sitting there with her roof caved in, with her house damaged for that whole period that these guys didn't want to do anything about it and just wanted to keep fighting, fighting, fighting because their attorneys told them, let me keep billing you $1,000 an hour. I'll win somehow on a technicality, which is absolute absurdity. And they never think like, well, go ask yourself like, well, why is Kevin and his law firm, why, why, why am I taking this case, right? Because on some level, if you're making a bet that you're gonna win this case with this, these really horrible facts for you, you're betting that I'm, that I'm stupid, <laughs> that, that I don't know what I'm doing. Even though I only, like a plaintiff's attorney only makes money if they are making accurate 
uh, determinations about the likelihood of winning. You can't always, I could never promise you like, oh, you're going to win if you sue Goodleap. You're going to win if you are in the solar situation. But when we looked at these, we were like, they are not in a good spot. And it only got worse as we start getting into this. At first we thought, oh, maybe we, we didn't really realize how up in it they were in terms of participation. And we think the evidence is coming out and showing, just like the arbitrator held here, that they were uh, controlling things at a level that didn't look, maybe look like that on the surface. So that, that happens, but you are caught in the crosshairs. And you have to think about that if you're doing business with a company. If a company doesn't treat you like a customer, if they look at you and say, this person is just someone to fight, this person is someone that if they if their house blows up from something that I'm financing with, according to the Minnesota Attorney General, at least in that state, fees that were not should not have been charged, um, I'm just going to fight them. And it's better for me financially, so I'll just let her sit in her house with the leaks everywhere and with the, the solar panels that might catch things on fire and that are not up to code and whatever. Um, that's who you're doing business with. Do you want to do business with someone like that? So look at your contracts. Make sure who the financing company is. This is not the only financing company with problems like this. The Minnesota Attorney General was suing various other people as well. And we're suing not just Goodly, but several others. But the decisions they make in litigation tell you who they are. They tell you how they think about their customers. And the decision to fight thousands and thousands of these arbitrations instead of trying to, you know, they owe people a lot of money, in my opinion. And, uh, and, and if, if things start going the way that this arbitration went, then they're going to, the problem is that they're, they're on the hook for a lot and they just don't want to pay it. And so it, at some point people stop caring about, you know, the poors. And, and again, that's a phrase that I think a, a certain class of people, uh, I'm talking about generally, uh, people who run private equity in general kind of view people that way. They view people as resources to be extracted as livestock. And that's how you get treated by certain companies. It's my opinion about how they're treating people. But I think that uh, these cases are good and we are uh, going, to, in particular in Georgia and Pennsylvania, are going after these guys with a number of cases and intend to keep doing it.